redefining what a budget full suspension bike can be. That's the Mongoose Ledge X1 and why it's sold out faster than any bike that I've featured on Kev Central thus far. And you've already seen, if not, I'll put the link down in the description where I turned this into a Kev Central project bike. Stage 1 only cost a little over $200, just a handful of parts, turn this into a comfortable trail rider, making this an excellent platform for the next evolution for my X1. And today you get to see it. It's eye-opening. Project Ledge X1 Stage 2 Outstanding. My goal for Stage 2 up the fun factor, pun intended, because I did so in a big way. I've been using fun headsets for a while now. I trust them, but they also make other components, and I went full on fun for this build. Let me show you what I mean. On top of the fun headset, I added a fun stem. This is an alloy 35mm stem. It is pro level lightweight, and it holds on to the 785mm fun alloy handlebars, all this anodized orange. I did cut the bars down, more on that in a moment. For grips, I went with the fun brand as well. These are Hilt Lock Ons. And I went back and forth on this. If I was going to use orange or black grips, I went with the orange as you can see, and I think it works. At least looks wise, you know, grips, one of the two main contact points, so these are going to have to prove themselves. And that's not all the fun, I'm just getting started there. First though, bar compliments other brands like these Advent X trigger shifters. And that shifter's cradled by the Shimano Deor hydraulic brakes with their iSpec mount. A big step up over the factory mechanical disc brakes and next to the left brake, but outside its iSpec mount, the dropper remote. X for its branding, its cable routed internally, but I'll be coming back to that. Before we get to that though, I want to look below that fun tapered headset at the new fork. An air fork, that was a requirement, along with it being manual lockout, something that's become kind of iffy recently, finding manual lockout brand name forks like this one that I scored for $197. An amazing price right now considering this is an SR Suntour Pixon with 140 millimeters of travel. It's an OEM fork, hence it being void of branding, and along with 140 millimeters of travel, it's a through axle fork, 15 by 100. And that through axle is running through new convertible hubs on the new wheels, fit with 27.5 by 2.60 tires. These are Mountain Kings by Continental. Tubeless ready, and hey, look at this, e-bike ready. I like the sound of that. These are legit Continentals, made in Germany, the good ones, meaning black chili compound, the non-heartburn type. Mountain King tires fit to new wheels. I went back to the local bike shop for these, and this is part one of a two-step build. Bontrager Line Comp 30s, the same type I used on the Axum recently. I've had really good luck with those. 30 millimeters wide on the rims. The hubs now sealed, and these wheels, very lightweight. Not carbon light, but compared to the factory wheels, amazingly light. And it's worth mentioning just how hard it is right now to find 30 millimeter wheels that are set up for a 135 quick release. And that 135 rear, it's decked out with an Advent X cassette. Along with its derailleur, its nice clutch. I love this Advent X setup. Matter of fact, this is my last of the three that I've had. The Ledge, a worthy home. When you're talking budget, light and reliable don't usually go with those two words. It makes a rare trifecta, but that holds true also for the crank set. This IXF crank set, this time packing some 30 tooth fun. And if you didn't know, the IXF crank set comes with its own external bearing bottom bracket that works perfectly with the Ledge's 68mm bottom bracket. And there's more fun, these pedals. Black Magic's ironically model named Orange. That means black pedals with anodized orange pegs and end cap. I really do hope these work as well as they look, especially paired with the other orange components. Like this one, the fun seat post clamp, and I read online that going backwards was better for droppers, something about equal pressure distribution, and I'm starting to see this done more often, so I thought I would give it a go, but comment below what you think about this. And if you're shopping for a clamp for the ledge, look for a 31.8 millimeter diameter. For the dropper, 27.2 millimeters, and this is an X Fusion dropper, hence the X on the remote. And capping that, what else but a fun saddle. An AdLib HD mountain bike saddle, color matching and quality looks. If you're confused because I keep saying dropper, you might not know what I'm talking about. A dropper post does this. That never gets old. It comes with the remote for which I put the internal cable routing to use. An internal cable routing, it's clean, modern, but nobody talks about the pain that it can be to route a cable internally. I paid the local bike shop to route the rear hydraulic brake hose through the internal channel. 
When it came time for the dropper cable, I got up early 6 a.m. on the day I filmed this, expecting an hours-long swear fest, but to my surprise, someone at Mongoose, a god-level person, put a removable cover over the lower port. It's absolutely amazing what touches this bike has for its low price. Mongoose is back, making great frames, ones that I'm happy to make great er, like with this new rear shock. Stage 2 gets an air shock. This particular one gives plenty of controls. It has a dual air chamber. It's a DNM AOY 36RC, the same model I used on Project XR over three years ago. It's still popular. And this is a perfect match to replace the factory shock because it has the same 165 millimeter eye to eye. Travel 35 millimeters. A note here because there are going to be some people that hear 35 millimeters lock in on that number and go crazy. That's shock travel, not actual suspension travel. To measure that, it gets complex. Luckily, I know a thing or two about pseudoscience. And using my best measuring device, I was able to get the rear suspension travel more or less. Using my measuring device, I was able to measure 35 millimeters of down travel at the front pivot versus the rear travel at the wheel, and I got 72-ish millimeters of rear travel. But there's a problem, because that 35 millimeters is linear travel. The pivot system actually arches as it moves, and the shock moves with it, meaning it tilts slightly. All this poorly represented by the curve on your screen, just imagine the shock tilting a bit. Now, I'm a foreign languages major, so stick with me here, but one of the few things I do know about math is that traveling the distance of a curve is longer than traveling in a straight line. So when I only measure 35 millimeters point to point based on a linear 165 millimeter travel eye to eye, I'm losing valuable travel numbers. So factoring in the curve from my perceived measures of the pivot, I came up with, using my most advanced pseudoscience equation, more. How much more? Now note, I'm totally ballparking it. This is a rough guess, but I'm getting 90 to 100 millimeters of full travel potential at the rear wheel based on a 35 millimeter shock. Straight line versus curve, simple pseudo math. Back to more tangible measures. Will these Stage 2 mods work and make this an epic riding bike? My most anticipated ride yet. After one quick loop on the warm-up track, I decided to make a few adjustment tweaks on that rear shock, and then it was on. And right away, massive improvement, even over Stage 1, which was already usable for light trail foam, but there were only two problems. Problem number one, I almost squished Mr. Turtle right out of the gate. I think this is the same turtle I almost ran over on Project Axum two weeks ago on the backside of the trail. A foot scoot later, and he's safe, and we're all good except for problem number two. And that's that I was in such a rush to get out on the trail with this bike that I ran off with a camera that only had 16% battery and 5 minutes and 32 seconds of free SD card space. I'm not going to overwrite my epic fireworks show footage, even for a trail bike. Meaning I'm just going to have to tell you my experience with this bike with the backdrop of what little footage I have, and I wasted 30 seconds of that on Mr. Turtle. Here's the skinny. I am absolutely confident that sans the Mongoose branding, I could fool a lot of people into thinking this is a higher tier bike, even more so if I let them ride it not knowing its true origins. And it's possible that I may be a jerk and test that theory out at some point. The ride superb, with plenty of travel, ultra smooth, there's no gimbal here. That rear suspension doing its job. The front fork amazing also. It slightly changes the bike's geo. It makes it slacker, but not enough to make climbing hills noticeably more difficult. Now this is full suspension, so it's not hard to tell climbing easy, but the new weight helps. I was hoping to get this down to 32 pounds, and my guesstimations were pretty good because it's 32 pounds even. Traction, now let me note, I'm coming off riding the Axum with its tubeless setup right before I rode this, and these Mountain Kings, I've kind of handicapped them by not running them tubeless, so it did have a few kickouts. But that's to be expected when I'm running high pressure in tubed tires. Five minutes into this intro ride, and I knew. This is by far the best full suspension project bike I've yet created, and sans the Cannondale Trigger 3, that carbon Cannondale bike that I owned and loved, this is the best full suspension bike that I've owned, and I have the joy of knowing I created it myself. I knew it was going to be good, I just didn't know that it was going to be this good. Project XR, Project Hydro, great bikes, but blown out of the water. Fun, fun, fun. Nobody's taking this away. I'm thinking the Beach Boys song in the back of my head. Seriously though, all the fun components, they help push this to bike shop caliber, and I'm not exaggerating. 
rock solid and the look it looks like it was pre-planned this way. I keep mentioning bike shop caliber but it's interesting to me that some of the parts that I've been using for a while now, budget parts, I'm now starting to see trickle onto bike shop brands. Think about that and with the advances that we're seeing on some of these big box bikes how long before the line really starts to blur? because it's already starting to get fuzzy in some areas. I know many local bike shop bikes well above this price that don't have internal cable routing and a tapered head tube or geometry as good as this bike's. As far as stage 2 for this Project Ledge X1, this build, every component has meshed and there's even room to grow. Remember, there are tubes in these tubeless ready wheels, heavy ones. This is an area that I could probably shave almost 2 pounds. And how about the firsts on this bike for it being a Kev Central project bike? The first one with a fork that has 140 millimeters of travel, the first through axle, and the first non-factory equipped dropper post. In anticipation of receiving this bike, I purchased three different droppers for it. And this X-Fusion Manic, it was the lightest of the lot, and I've been happy with it. The DM rear shock and known stellar performer, perfectly at home on this bike, no modification necessary, and I have a 190 DNM to test as well. Looking for things to pick at on this build, there are a couple. One snafu is on me. I bought these 785mm bars with plans to cut them down to 740, but I didn't pay attention to the markings. So when I thought I was cutting them down to 740, I was actually cutting 40 millimeters off each side. And I could pick at the pedals, but only because I'm coming from the Crank Brothers, so there's a hard act to follow. But these are good. They're on the level of race face chesters. And the anodizing is outstandingly durable. Normally, on a project bike, I would consider stage 2 the final build and be 100% happy with this, but this ledge, I think it can scale even higher. Stage 3 already underway, and it will be beyond anything that I've ever done to a project bike thus far, so stay tuned, next level mods coming. But for now, I want you to share your thoughts on stage 2. Pretty awesome, right? Give this video a thumbs up if you liked it. I hope you're subscribed, if not. Hit that subscribe button and make sure you have the notification bell active. Thanks for watching Kev Central and have a great day.